Hello YouTube, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from New Jersey. So let me say thank you to everyone that uh, watched part one of this video. I'm very, very grateful to all of you. Uh, a lot of comments came in. I've responded to almost everyone. Uh, the one that stood out was one by Anil. Anil, I know who you are. Uh, we've spoken before. And um, your, con your comment was regarding uh, thermal degradation or thermal management that will result in loss of capacity from the Nissan Leaf batteries. A uh, very good observation, unlike the Tesla or the Chevy Volt that are liquid cooled, the Nissan Leaf is air cooled. And the question is, people are, people, the question is, um, since it's not liquid cooled, would it lose capacity because they are subjecting it to much higher temperatures relative to what you would see with say a Chevy Volt or the, um, what do you call it, Chevy Volt or the Tesla. Um, the answer actually is that Nissan doesn't really push those batteries. Um, they, have, they have very good thermal management and when Nissan started selling these things um, seven, 19 years ago, I think yeah, 2003, 2010, 19 years ago, uh, they, had, people, they had anticipated that they would have a 5% return rate on the batteries because of either thermal losses or the batteries going bad. And so far that number is statistically insignificant, it's less than 1%. And if you go to a Nissan dealership today, there is a very strong possibility that they do not have a battery in stock. You have to order one for them to replace it if something goes bad. So I'm not 100% convinced that um, the thermal issue is a big one because uh, based on the numbers they have out there and based on the replacements they've done, it's not come up. So thank you for the observation. One of the things we notice with the leaves, however, is that you have to push them to at least 4.1 to get maximum capacity out of them and then we don't recommend you discharge them below 3.65%. So, Anil, you also brought up a very interesting subject. So, since these batteries are aging differently, and we're not buying a single large pack, we're buying individual units from a reseller that could have brought them from multiple vehicles. How do we manage um, where the discharge or the capacities of the different cells are not the same? And we've, seen, we've actually seen it on our batteries. We've had... Um, let me use an example of cell number eight. Cell number eight will charge at 4.1 volts, while all the other while cell one through seven will still be at 3.9 volts. And your BMS will automatically stop charging because it's seen that one that's gone over, and you wait for it to come down, and then it starts trying to charge again. But guess what? Cell number eight will still go faster, charge faster than the others. So how do you um, address that? Because people are telling me that they have BMSs, you know, someone told me they purchased a, and it's Frank. Frank, you purchased a Batrium that has passive and active balancing. And yes, active and passive balancing means they charge at the top, they charge at the bottom. Sorry, they balance at the top, they balance at the middle and they balance at the bottom. But in order for it to balance at the top, the battery has to reach full capacity. And if you have a cell that's going higher than all the other cells, then guess what? You never get to full capacity. So you only have one cell that's at full capacity while you have the other seven that never got full capacity. So how do you fix that? So um, Sean gave me a link to an AliExpress site and this is from a seller I purchased a bunch of things from before and he has something called a balancer and equalizer. And I've purchased a bunch of them and I'll be doing a video. So what does a balancer and equalizer do? Very nice question and actually very exciting what it does. Uh, a balancer and equalizer does your active and passive balancing. So it balances at the top, it balances at the middle, it balances at the, at, the, at the bottom. So what that means is your batteries are constantly, it doesn't matter where it is, your, ba 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 your battery voltages are pretty similar and you don't have, um, you're, you're kind of getting full capacity and you're not using one cell, losing one than the others. But what the equalizer does is a little even better than that. The equalizer looks at a cell that's higher, so that number 8 that's higher than all the others, it would reduce, it would take from number 8 and put it in the lowest, lowest one to bring the low one close to where all the other batteries are so that when you charge, you're charging everything at 4.1 volts. Did that make sense? So let me repeat. The equalizer portion 
has um, a, a equalizer portion has the ability to bleed from the highest voltage cell and put it into the lower voltage cell. So instead of what our balancer does where it balances by burning off, this actually removes it from one, one bucket and puts it into another bucket. Fantastic in my opinion. One, one thing that it allows me to do is even if I have cells that have, have different capacities and different age, age, different ages, I can get them all to be at similar voltages. I can get to, to fully charge them, and when I discharge them, I can get the maximum out of them without having one cell that drops much more than the others. I hope that made, made sense to you. And if you're as excited as I am, please click on the link below to go visit the AliExpress um, page or site of the vendor, and then you can study more about it. Also, don't forget to visit Sean McCarthy to see about his balance blocks. He told me that he's discontinued selling the balance blocks because this solution is much better than what his is. If you like what you've seen, please give me a thumbs up. If you're yet to subscribe, please click subscribe. And for all of you that commented, I thank you. We've got two new subscribers today. Welcome on board. I hope you enjoy my content. Once again, thank you for watching. This is Dr. Solar.